Well, hello folks out there in YouTube land. Got an interesting show for you. We're going to talk about the most important position on the field and why you absolutely cannot miss on your QB. If you do, you'll regret the crap out of it. It's just the way that it is. You must get it right, period. Now we're going to talk about some schools that got it right and some that didn't. Let's start out with one that got it right. Uh, Miami with Cam Ward. Holy crap, can this guy play. When I watched him in that first uh, half of the game against Florida, and he was just jogging along like it was a practice session, and he kind of slowed down as he went out of bounds, I knew immediately Florida was toast. Quarterbacks don't act like that. They usually run out of bounds as fast as they can. He didn't care. He was like, hey, I'm so laid back. I know I'm going to whoop you, and I'm kind of toying with you a little bit as I run out of bounds. And he played that way the entire game and absolutely boat raced Florida up and down the field and just beat them into the ground. At the swamp. You don't, it's just, it's just awful. That's a team that totally got it right. And now they're feeling fantastic in Miami land. As you can see, they scored 56 points in the one game and 41 in the other. So they're closing in on 100 points in uh, two days, in uh, two games. I understand one of them was against a very small club, but Florida's no joke. They do have some defense there, and it was at home. So that's a uh, team that got it right at quarterback. My understanding, I was actually talking to a fellow by the name of TJ that's got his own uh, couple of channels, uh, Double Fries, No Slaw for Florida State, and uh, College Football Addictions is his other one. And I asked him why FSU didn't get Cam Ward. And he said, well, uh, Miami was willing to pay whatever price, and that they couldn't outbid. Huge mistake for FSU because now we're going to talk about a team that got it wrong. And that's with DJ. I'm going to call him DJU because I always mess up its name. It's too hard to say. But DJ has struggled big time at Florida State. And when you look at their first two ball games, first they got beat by Georgia Tech in Dublin, Ireland by a field goal. And then they got beat by Boston College by 15 points at home. Folks, that is not a good situation. Those are two teams that FSU should have easily beaten. FSU was a really good team last year. They lost their quarterback. They still were good enough to win their last two games. But this year, they don't have the horses that they thought they were going to have. And they need a quarterback to help them out a lot. And DJ's not the guy. And understand, this is a team that would have gotten in the playoffs last year had, had there been uh, 12 teams. And this year, they went into it thinking they had a great chance. Not anymore. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Yeah, yeah. They just need to win a game, honestly. And now they're getting ready to play Memphis, and I don't know if they can beat them. And the problem is they spent money to go out and get DJ, and they don't have a backup that's ready to go. And here's the other thing. Let's say you go with a freshman or you go with somebody that's not ready because you're preparing for 2025. The seniors and the juniors and all these guys that are going to the NFL or at least going to try, they're going to quit. They're just going to, you know, they're not going to give you the effort that you need to win ball games because you can't go out there and just kind of go through the motions. That's just the way it is. When you pretty much signal to the team, hey, we're moving on, they're not going to give you what you need. It's just the way that it is. And we're going to talk more about that as we uh, go down this list. Now we're going to talk about a team that got it right with the quarterback. And they paid up to $8 million, according to many reports, to get this guy. He was the number one recruit in 2022, and that's uh, Nico Iamaliava. Now, this guy, you could just tell, even in his little uh, mop-up duty games, that he moved in a different way. He just had a way about him. And all the coaches in uh, California were just like, you're not going to believe how good this guy is. Well, his very first game that he played in was in a bowl game against Iowa, he had a makeshift offensive line against a top 10 defense, and they sacked him six times. Well, all he did was score three touchdowns. We won 35 to nothing, and he turned the ball over zero times, and he was cool as a cucumber the entire game. Never got flustered. Most any other new quarterback would have been freaking out, not Nico. He was puring it out there. And now we've played two games already, this season, and we just played NC State, which is a top 25 team at the time, and beat them 51 to 10. And Nico uh, scored three more touchdowns. I think he's had like 11 touchdowns and two interceptions in the first, in his last three games, which is his only three games. So, needless to say, Tennessee is feeling good right now. 
Well, you just never know when another beast might come down out of the forest. <laughs> you understand, don't you, Thumb Lou? This is what we call the deadly game. <laughs> I'm in it for keeps. <laughs> Yeah, we're ready to play our next beast. Now, we got to play Kent State next week, this weekend, so that's not a big uh, test. But then we go to Oklahoma, and that will be a test because Oklahoma is loaded with, uh, with talent, and it's going to be at Oklahoma, so it'd be a heck of a ball game. But fortunately, we got it right with Nico, and we paid the money, and it's worked out fantastic. Now let's talk about a team that totally didn't get it right, and this is a team – that I wore out all off season. I even did videos about it. It's like you're making a huge mistake, Hugh Freeze, by uh, going with this fella, and that's uh, Peyton Thorne. Nice young man. I'm sure he's a great dude. And I'm sorry that, look, he's getting paid money to play football. Okay, he's a professional athlete. You can take criticism. He's a guy that throws interceptions, and he doesn't throw for uh, a good completion rate. He's done that at Michigan State. He's doing it here. In his last game against California, a team that Auburn should have handled easily. As a matter of fact, Paul Feinbaum said there was a 0% chance that uh, California could beat them. You mentioned it earlier this week that it is an ACC versus SEC matchup between the Cal Golden Bears and the Auburn Tigers. Is there any chance, Paul, that you think that the Auburn Tigers could be on upset alert this week? There is no chance Auburn loses to Cal. None. Book it. You sure about that? And they lost the ball game because he threw four interceptions. That's just the reality. And the other uh, quarterback threw two touchdowns and no interceptions. So that's what happens. Now they're sitting here at uh, one and one, and they don't they don't know what to do. They don't have a backup that's ready to go. They should have gone out and gone after somebody like uh, Diego Pavia, for gosh sakes, at at Vanderbilt. Look how amazing that guy's been. They're 2-0 and oh at Vanderbilt. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> and they beat Virginia Tech. I'm going to tell you right now, that guy put the team on his shoulders and carried them to victory. They couldn't be more pumped at Vanderbilt. They got the right quarterback. And here's the thing. Auburn played against New Mexico State and watched Pavia kick their butt at the Plains. It's crazy. But they did oh, we don't want him. We've got Peyton. Great move. That's the second year you've missed on a quarterback. You went to Michigan State and got him there, and now you've stuck with him. That's two years you missed. That's not good, Hugh. I'm, you've disappointed me. I thought you were going to go down there and get this team turned around real quick, which uh, you should have done had you picked the right QB because you're going to be a good team, but you're going to have to suffer through another bad year. Ron, ah! wh where are you? Ah, I'm in a glass case of emotion. And that sucks for your fan base because y'all have got enough players to be very difficult to deal with. At least win nine games. Now you might win seven or eight at best. Now we're going to talk about Kentucky. I'm not going to give Kentucky a ton of grief yet. They did go out and they got a quarterback that I think is pretty darn good, which was Brock Vandergriff. He played great in the first game against an easy team. He got his butt kicked in the second game against South Carolina because Carolina lived in the backfield. Now, I don't know if that's a hit or a miss with Brock Vandergriff. Honestly, he didn't look good in that game, and he only had three completions for 30 yards, which is just pitiful, and he got benched in the fourth quarter. But at least they went out and they got a quarterback that they thought could be really good. He was the backup to Carson Beck. A lot of people had said it was close between him and Carson who was going to start uh, when uh, Carson got the start last year. So it was understandable that a big-time recruit like Brock Vandergriff, they went and got. Maybe it works out, maybe it won't. Right now, it's not looking as good, but I'm not going to give Kentucky a ton of grief because at least they recognized, hey, we better get a guy. They've got a couple of young guys that are going to be really good, but they're not ready. So we'll see how this plays out for Kentucky. But like I said, at least they went out and they got somebody. So anyway, I did want to cover this because if you've got the right quarterback or a good quarterback, you can compete. If you don't, I don't care how good the talent is. You know, unless you're on Georgia's uh, ball club, or uh, maybe maybe in Alabama, maybe in Ohio State, unless you're just so loaded with blue chips that you can kind of you know be a pedestrian quarterback and be okay. If you're not in that situation, you're going to suffer. That's just the way it is. You've got to get the QB right. And if you don't, your season's cooked. It's the way it is. So anyway, I did want to cover this because there's no other position that's anywhere close to as important. You can't miss at QB. It's just the way it is. And it's probably three to five times more important than any other position. 
And if you like this type of coverage, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know continue to cover all these big college sports stories. If you've not subscribed, boom, 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 hit that little button. It won't cost you a dime, and it helps me out, help you get my videos. And right over here is the most recent video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.